Revelation chapter 3 this morning. Revelation chapter 3. All Right, Revelation chapter 3, we're going to start reading in verse 14. Verse number 14, when you get there, just as a public service announcement, whoever brought the devil with you last night or yesterday, you can take him home with you today. We don't need him around here today, amen? Uh, it had been pretty clean around here as far as praying goes, and you know, people always saying they see stuff and junk like that, and we was praying, got rid of most of that stuff, and I was in here last night, and there was a little disturbance. Could have been a rat, could have, could have been a devil, I don't know, but it disturbed my prayer anyway. When you, it didn't scare me, uh, the Lord scares me. Uh, but walking around, you know, when you're praying, you stop praying and stuff's moving around back there, and I think it was Miss Holly's cleaning the closet back there. You better pray over that place when you get in there. <laughs> Uh, and then everything goes quiet. You sit here, look, yeah, Brother Derek might have spent the night in there. Did you run him off last night, make him go sleep? <laughs> I thought it might have been Alex at first. I seen Alex's truck sitting out there all night long. But at any rate, I thought it was kind of funny. I, I'd pray a little while, and I'd stop, and whatever was making noise back there would keep making noise for a second. And whatever it was disturbed, disturbed my prayers, amen? So be careful. You never know what you might be messing with. A lot of people don't think nothing about messing around with this whole world, but there's a lot of unclean spirits uh, around. Oh, Brother Mike, you sound like a charismatic. No, I sound like a Christian. Yeah. Amen? Amen? You mess around with a bunch of junk or a bunch of people who mess around with a bunch of junk, and you might get something on you, amen? Uh, I... I I'd be more careful about stuff like that than I would about COVID. You know, wear a mask and uh, hand sanitizer and all that stuff. People go crazy about that. Which, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. But people never pay attention to what they're messing with. Amen. It's just a joke. Don't worry about it. Amen. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. All right. Now we got, see, you feel that? That's, that's good, that's good preaching weather right there. Yeah. Amen. Revelation chapter 3, verse, verse number, uh, did I say 3? Yeah, uh, chapter number 3 and verse number 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor 
and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, Amen. that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. That's a mighty good passage of Scripture right there. Let's pray a little bit. Lord, we thank you this morning for your goodness and grace, and I pray that you would help us. I pray, God, that you would let us have uh, some gravity, some sincerity here this morning, and I pray, dear God, that you would uh, help, uh, help me to preach, and Lord, I pray that you would help these to hear and understand and respond. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would help them, dear God, to hear what you'd have to say, and Lord, that they'd be very interested in getting that thing, whatever it might be, uh, corrected and right and in fellowship with you. And Lord, I thank you and praise you for what you do here this morning. Thank you for your goodness and for your grace. I ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right, let me read verse number 20 again. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. When I was uh, a, a boy, and I think the the uh, I think the game show was actually before my time. I don't know if they were making it then or they were playing uh, remakes of it or what reruns or whatever you might call them. But it was a game show where they had all these uh, different prizes and stuff, and you got to choose what was behind door number one or door number two or door number three. And I don't remember how the game went and all that stuff, but I know this. Uh, because of that game show, they, uh, it became uh, a common expression if you was going to open up a, uh, a, a chest or open up a house that hadn't been opened in years and you didn't know what was in the thing that you was about to open, the common expression was, let's see what's behind door number one. Let's see what's behind door number one. So that's what I want to preach to you about this morning, door number one. Door number one. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And the Lord is standing at your door and knocking this morning. And now he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door. See, the Bible said that he's knocking. But then he said, If you hear my voice. I wish I could hear my voice. I can barely hear what I'm saying. I uh, had COVID a couple weeks ago and my ears are closed up and I can't hardly hear what I'm saying. And so I'm a little bit apprehensive. Uh, if I say something I ought not to, I'm not going to take credit for it because I can't really hear what I'm saying. So uh, I know what I'm trying to say, but if it comes out that way, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know uh, hardly what I'm saying, but I know this, the Lord knocking on your door and he really and truly ain't even using his hands to do it. He's using his voice. You ever heard God speak to you? You ever heard God say, uh, I mean, you might, you might not have heard a, a literal physical voice, uh, but maybe a sermon was preached, maybe you was reading your Bible, maybe you just got still long enough for God to deal with you. You know, a lot of times people say, well, God ain't dealing with me about that. God ain't talking to me about nothing. Now, it might be that you just hadn't sat down and, and uh, been quiet long enough to hear what God's saying. You know, well, you know, uh, I, preacher, I don't really think it's none of your business to be dealing with me about that after all. God hadn't said nothing to me about it. Well, maybe you ain't listened. Maybe, maybe you was deceived about a thing or two. He said, here you, you say you're rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. He said, but really you wretched and poor and miserable. Have you ever thought that God's idea about you and the stuff you're messing with might be different than the idea you got about you and the stuff you're messing with. Your opinion of you don't make much difference. Did you know that? Amen. Well, preacher, I'm just going to follow my conscience. You're probably going to end up wrong then. Well, preacher, I'm the one, I'm a free moral agent, and I'm the one that makes these decisions. And you know every man's really a pastor, and every man really needs to deal with God on an individual. Well, you know what? Probably you ain't got enough sense to do that. 
That's probably right. Well, preacher, you know, you got your religion and I got mine. Yours is probably wrong. Well, that's the attitude that you need to take. You know what Paul said? Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am. And that's about the attitude that a person ought to have. I don't believe that a man really has any uh, repentance or anything like that unless that's the opinion that he has of himself. I ain't nothing but a wretch. That's, I mean, that's about the opinion that a man ought to have of himself. I've heard preachers say, and I've heard some other people say, you know, we're saved, but we're all saved, and we're all sinners. That, you know, a person possessed by the devil, when you talk to them about things, what they usually say is, well, you know, we're all sinners. That's the excuse of somebody trying to get away with something. That's the excuse of somebody that's got a high opinion of themselves and they don't want to hear nobody else's opinion. Now, I will admit that somebody else's opinion of you don't really matter that much, but we're not talking about just somebody else. We're talking about God's opinion of yourself. And listen, I don't think there's a person in this room and I don't think there's probably a person that'll ever listen to this sermon online or anything else, but that won't tell you that these churches in Revelation, uh, I mean, that's the common belief that, you know, these little churches, they represent a period of time, and one church was the beginning of the church age, and another one was a little bit further down the line, and a little, and what I'm saying is almost everybody that believes theology like we believe will tell you Laodicean church is the day and time that we live in. Almost every single person will tell you that. The Laodicean church represents the church just before Jesus comes back. Ain't that right? All you theologians, ain't that what they'll tell you? Laodicean. But ain't nobody ready to stick up their hands and say, they talking about us. He's he talking about the church now. Well, ain't you part of the church? Well, if you're part of the church and that's what you believe about this passage of Scripture, he might be talking about you. No, he ain't talking about me. He's talking about somebody else. He ain't talking about me. He's talking about Brother Mark. He ain't talking about me, he's talking about Brother Allen. Brother Allen's wretched, but not me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Brother so and so's wretched, but not me. Amen. Hey, did you see them Christians over there that don't use the King James Bible? Oh, they're wretched. They're wretched. We're going to deal with that here in a little bit. Say, so Brother Mike, you use the King James Bible? Nothing but, nothing but. But I tell you this just because you can say, hey, I just only got a King James Bible, that don't mean you ain't wretched. That don't mean you ain't blind. Did you know you can be blind with the King James Bible? You know who else uses a King James Bible? Jehovah's Witness. I, I, uh, not Jehovah's Witness. Uh, Mormons. Mormons use a King James Bible. I used to deal with them in Mount Airy, North Carolina. They say, oh, we use the King James too. I said, that don't make much difference. The devil uses the King James Bible. The devil can quote Scripture. I know a lot of devils that quote scripture. I, I've been one of them myself, amen. You say, why? Because I'm wretched. Amen. See, when you got, to, I don't know if I'm screaming too loud or not, but I can hardly hear me. I'm screaming where I can hear me preach. I like to hear me preach too, amen. <laughs> hey, listen, he says, listen, he said, you're wretched and blind and miserable, and I don't think I've ever seen a crowd more miserable than today's Christians. Go to church, and, and when you pray, well, I've just been praying. Preacher, I just don't know what to tell you. I don't know what I'm going to do. I've been praying about it. You mean you've been praying with that face? You've been praying and that's the kind of, that's the kind of results you're getting? You might be praying to be Elzebub or something. I don't know what in the world's going on. I know this. Listen, if I feel a little bit bad and get in a room somewhere and pray a little while, hey, Makes me feel better. Yeah. Makes me feel better. Matter of fact, though, I mean, from time to time, I'll, I'll get to praying, and God will show up, and I do feel a little bit worse about myself. I feel better about Him, though. You know, I've made a mess just about out of everything I've ever touched in my life. Most of the decisions I made was wrong. Most of the actions that I performed in my lifetime were sinful. But Jesus Christ died on the cross for me, saved me by faith, and not my works. And I just, I just, when I read my Bible, I see repentance as somebody getting it in their heart and in their mind that I'm wretched and God's good and God's wonderful and God's graceful. And I might mess everything up, but God's going to be there uh, to work with me and help me and uh, straighten everything out. And boy, that kind of attitude, uh, even though it is kind of negative, will make you say, well, everything's going to be all right then. Amen. Everything's going to be all right. 
But not many people got that attitude. Many, most people got the attitude, I'm okay, everything's okay, and I'm miserable. Well, I, preacher, I got some bad stuff going on. I'm kind of depressed. Well, let's see what's going on. Could it be you? No, no, it couldn't be me. I just, I'm always down. I'm always feeling bad. Well, what you watching on TV? Oh, preacher, that ain't got nothing to do with it. Well, what is it? Your million dollars broke or something? I... That's usually what it is, ain't it? I mean, just, well, you know, everything, everything's bad. You mean you, you didn't get the $20 raise somebody promised you? <laughs> That's what people, people come to the preacher and say, you know, I got this, you know, I got this job, I, and I'm going to, you know, this is so wonderful, and the next week you see them, they got the same old frown on their face. People got it all figured out, but don't know nothing. Amen. Amen. Well, what's all this problem about here? He says in, in Revelation chapter 3, he says, he says, so you're wretched and miserable and blind. He says, that Thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. Of course, <laughs> you don't have to scratch your head about that in the layout of sea in church age, do you? Folks come to church with the yogurt pants on and all kinds of stuff like that. I mean, naked. They think they're modest. Yeah. They think they're fine. This is all right. I mean, you got to be, listen, let, you got to be some kind of stupid to walk outside your underclothes on and think you all right. Amen. 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 You know what it is? You, you think you're not a sinner. Did you know Adam and Eve was naked before they fell and had no shame? There's something, there's something about being repentant and recognizing a sin nature that'll make you Ashamed. All your grandpas and grandmas, and they was always harping about something and made you ashamed about something. Well, that's good for you. Amen. <laughs> we'll just call this sermon, You Ought to Be Ashamed. You ought to be. You ought to, preacher, you're, no, it ain't me, it's you. Preacher, you're always me. No, it ain't me, it's you. Stop deflecting, okay? That's what's going on. Oh, but uh, as, uh, you're naked, and you say, well, oh, you're mean. Well, you stand before the Lord naked, and I stand before him mean. I believe I... Huh? Amen. You, all you're doing is trying to, you know, switch the blame somewhere else. You know what the best way to do is in, in this life? It's just take the blame. Amen. I was talking about somebody this, about this stuff this, this past week. You know, uh, You'd be, a better, you'd be better off in your heart, in your mind, in your life, in your Christianity if you just take the blame. Amen. 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 Some of you husbands, just take the blame. Amen. Amen? Oh. You're right. Now, some of you henpecked, and that's all you do say is you're right. That causes just as much problems. But I'm talking about some of this back and forth in homes, the back and forth in churches. Somebody ought to just take the blame and put the problem on their shoulder and go forward with it and try to fix it. Uh, listen, when uh, pastoring down in Folkestone, we had times where 15, 16 people at a time, sometimes more than that, would just get mad and leave and put us in a place where we had to start all over again and that happens from time to time that's going to happen in the church but I found out that the best thing to do was just get up in front of that little congregation that was left and say this is my fault and we're going to go forward and we're going to do what we got to do and we're going to try to serve the Lord and that usually just quashed it right there. You get up and say well it was his fault and her fault and that person's fault and that person did this and this person done that. You're just going to stir up more trouble. You may as well just take the blame and go on. Amen. God says, somebody around here is miserable. Somebody around here is naked. That ain't attitude's going to get you nowhere. It just ain't. It just ain't. You know what he said? He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And he's knocking with his voice. He's knocking with his word. He's trying to get somebody's attention on the other side. Amen. What's behind door number one? Well, you know what's behind door number one? You. I have never 
had it. Now, I've had the Lord tell me some things. I've had the Lord show me some things. But I have never had the Lord to come and knock on my door. That's good access right there. Amen. <laughs> said, hey, Brother Mike, I just wanted to tell you about this Jacob character out here. The Lord ain't coming to talk to you about somebody that's already on this side of the door. He coming to talk to you about you. And I don't know too much about whether the Lord's knocking on doors. He said, behold, I, all these open doors around here. That's good, amen. The Lord did tell one of them churches, I set before you an open door. That's, that's the ones that believe the Bible, though, amen. Well, he said, look, here, you know what this door is? It's the, it's the, he said, that comes from Lowe's. I think this one might have come from Home Depot. It don't. It's a Baptist door. Don't close. Hey man. <laughs> uh, somebody got that on the sale somewhere. You know what that door is? It's whatever's between you and God. God got a special way of coming and just finding exactly what's between you and Him. And he's not going to knock on all your doors. There's probably plenty between you and him. I'm glad that we got a God that deals with us one door at a time. Amen. The first time he ever come to you, come knocked on your door. He wasn't knocking on your door about no cigarettes or nothing like that. He was knocking on your door because you was lost. And then when you opened the door and you got that out of the way, uh, he felt fellowship with you a little bit. Hey, how you doing, son? And, and what's going on? And it seemed kind of like, you ever had a dream where you're doing one thing and then all of a sudden you're doing something else? You'll be cleaning the, the backyard and then all of a sudden you're in the mall. Crazy stuff like that. Well, the Lord come through the first door of salvation. He dealt with you about that. He got this thing settled. That door is open. Everything's fine now. And he's walking along with you and talking and fellowshipping with you. And all of a sudden, he disappears. And you're looking for him everywhere. What, what in the world's going on? And all of a sudden, you hear it. And he says, you say, well, what's going on? And he says, there's a little something between me and you now. And you say, well, what is it? And he says, I'm going to need you to put these cigarettes down now, son. They're going to kill you. And he said, well, Lord, you know, I, I've been doing this a long time, and I, I might not be able to do it. But he says, you got me, and now you can do all things. He said, well, my friends might not hang out with me no more. And he says, well, Deal with that door when we get to it. Well, Lord, I don't know if I can do it or not. You ever dealt with the Lord like that? That's the way it's going to work. And, and I don't believe you can go much further with the Lord till you deal with that door. That's an obstacle. Yes, sir. That's right. Now, wouldn't I look stupid if I kept doing that all day? Every door I come to today, not tomorrow or yesterday, but every door I come to today, wouldn't I look silly in your eyes and in the eyes of everybody, especially if they wouldn't hear <laughs> listening to this sermon? Like the folks that laid out of Sunday school, which is probably one of these doors, but the folks that laid out of Sunday school this morning, they, they come in this morning, they don't know what's going on, they didn't hear the message, and during the singing, uh, I'll take Brother Allen's place in the pacing. Yes. And I start walking back and forth, and they don't know what's going on, and all of a sudden I just... <laughs> and they think, let me call 911. <laughs> Brother Mike's having a breakdown. <laughs> I had my breakdown a long time ago. That's why I don't mind acting like this. I, <laughs> and then next week somebody's going to say, you know what, the preacher come to me and he said I was acting kind of stupid. 
And he ought not be minding people's business like that. But that preacher got up on Tuesday night and talked about me and said, boy, I was dumb and I was acting all kinds of fools. I know because what you you just live in your life, but anybody with any sense can look at you and see you. Just, yeah. The way you're living your life, you're trying to advance, but you're not getting the doors open. You're just bumping in. And some of you have been reading your King James Bible and bouncing off the same door for 20 years, 30 years. Oh, I believe I can keep watching this mess and right. read my Bible and stuff like that. But you know what? If you ain't making no headway. Right. Why don't you just admit it? Why don't you just get down on your knees and say, I'm wretched. Amen. And God, why is that? And he'll say, well, I've been trying to get at you through this door for a long time. But you know what people do? They'll come up to it. If you're going to deal with God, you're going to have to deal with him. Through. Did he knock on the door? Is that where he says he's knocking? Well, you're going to have to deal with him through the door. You ever been on visitation? And what you hear on the inside is... When you go on visitation, people are going to use their shh louder than they talk. It's like God is in there amplifying everything just so you can hear what's going on. Shh. <laughs> exactly. It's the preacher. Why don't you go? What's happening? What's the problem? Like the meth, the meth dealer comes by. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> the deputy sheriff comes with the summons. Yeah. Ah. Verizon man comes to get his past due cable vision bill. Yeah. Hey, listen, if you don't watch this. If you ain't down at the church next week, we're going to take your name off the roll. You are legalist! <laughs> sir, if you don't pay your bill, we're going to cut off your cable bill. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. <laughs> You're poor and wretched and miserable and blind. You have need of nothing. <laughs> but <laughs> well, let's talk about turning off cable. Huh? Oh, yes, sir. I wish people reacted to the preacher like they did the man that's going to turn off the cable bill if you don't pay it. Hey, uh, you better get right with God. Oh, God, help me. Help me. Amen. Just respond like you do when they're going to come repossess your little maverick or whatever you're driving. Huh? But you know what they do, Brother Heath? Ain't that obnoxious sounding? That's the way preaching sounds to most of you, ain't it? Yeah, you want to go somewhere where preaching is like... Got that beat, huh? Oh, that sound, that's the best knocking preacher I've ever heard. Oh, isn't he wonderful? <laughs> I, the, the first couple of weeks I was a pastor at People's, these little girls, I heard these little girls talking about there was a preacher coming, going to be across, you know, over in the next county someplace. And these girls like, are you going to go here, brother so-and-so? Like, if you're going to lust after somebody and talk about him, like, don't call him brother. <laughs> like, leave the brother part. He might be your brother. I'm not saying he's not saved, but if you're going to talk about somebody like that, leave the Christianity part out of it and just, and when I'm saying, oh, he's so good looking. I hadn't liked him since then. Put you to sleep on it. That's the way people like it. But when God talks it, 
Open up, it's the police. <laughs> That's what it sounds like, ain't it? Hey, you've been reading your Bible this week? You've been praying? You've been praying for your brothers and sisters? You've been watching your old long tongue this week? That's what it sounds like. That's why folks don't like it. That's why folks don't like it. You know what people do when you start? Listen, if God's dealing with you, you've got to deal with him through the door. But you know what folks do, don't you? What you want? <laughs> he didn't knock on the window. <laughs> you know, God does have windows. He said, He said, you give like you ought to, and I'll open you the windows of heaven. He said, see if I won't open you the windows of heaven. Talk just like an old country boy, don't he? See if I won't do it. He said, I'll open you up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Listen, God don't come see you through the windows. That's an old peeping Tom. I mean, you got a Bible. That's a window. Meet him right there. He'll open it up, and he'll pour you out a blessing right there. But you don't talk back to him through the Bible. You talk to him where he deals with you at. Amen. What you want out there? He said, I come to talk to you about all that gossiping you've been doing. Yeah. Well, Lord, I'm, I'm just standing up for you. No, no, you ain't. You're just standing up for you. Well, hey, hey, you uh, I'm going to get that right as soon as I can. As soon as I feel convicted about it. Yeah. Only problem is he ain't listening now. What? Gossiping? Well, I read the King James Bible. See, that's windows. You're dealing with him through the windows. Hey! Can you still hear me? I'm a member of Faith Baptist Church. You can't deal with God like that. That's not the way you deal with God. Amen. That ain't the way you deal with it. He didn't knock on your window. He didn't ask you about your church membership. He didn't ask you what Bible you read. Of course, he'll probably get to that if you got an NIV. Come to see you about that NIV, boy. I don't think God would deal with you. <laughs> I do. Amen. I certainly do. Well, Lord, you know, I got me a membership down there at the church. He said, well, you got a membership at the gym, too, but that ain't doing you much good, either. <laughs> <laughs> I never seen so, I, I never seen such out of shape, despicable human beings. As I've ever seen this gym membership age that we got. Everybody got a gym membership. I got one. Got a big old fat belly, too. I ain't got a big old fat nothing else, but my belly's getting there, amen. But the gym membership works wonders for you. <coughs> amen. God knocking on your door, he wants you to deal with what he's knocking on your door about. Amen. Door number one is whatever between you and God. And you're going to have to deal with him right through that door. Listen, you can go on pretending if you want to. But until this door gets open, there ain't no advancement. Right. You just bump your head on it from now to kingdom come. It ain't going to make no difference. Right. You're going to keep coming to church, and church ain't going to get no better for you. You'll come and it'll just get more upsetting and more upsetting. You know what? Some of you, church would be a lot more enjoyable to you if you just quit looking at other people. You know, I hear people say, you need to get right about this. You need to get right about that. Y'all need to stop doing, y'all need to stop doing this. Y'all need to stop doing that. Y'all need to do this. Y'all need, but I ain't never heard them get up one time and say, I got right about that. Amen. The world would come to a screeching halt. They'd just get slung off into the universe. I'm, oh. 
that guy, I've been hearing him harp on other people for years and years and years and years and years. And all of a sudden he stood up and said, I just wanted to tell y'all. <laughs> Have you ever listened to yourself? When you're talking about somebody else's. You're rotten. But when they talk about theirself, I just tell you, I got along with God the other day, and boy, I just had the most wonderful time. I just, ooh, I'm so happy in the Lord. But, but you, on the other hand, I've been meaning to talk to you about your hair. <laughs> Y'all see what's happening right now, don't you? Let me give you a very distinct and accurate account of how things usually go between two Christians. Now, your hair is despicable. <laughs> it's building up this wall between you and me. And I feel like if you don't do something about your hair, you and I can never have fellowship. <laughs> Anybody see what's wrong with that conversation? Put your sunglasses on now because I'm about to put my bald head next to his and it's going to be <laughs> some kind of a climactic event here. <laughs> Most Christians account of one another goes just like that. Bunch of bald heads fussing at other bald heads. What you do is you get over here that somebody's not got the same problem you've got and say, hey buddy. You're getting a little long on top there, ain't you? As far as I'm concerned, there ain't nothing about that that's right with God. Huh? Look at that. Disgusting. That's what you're supposed to do. But most of us got the same problems everybody else does. And what it all boils down to is just the fact that you can't get people to open the door. And if, you, if Brother Jay would open the door, he might grow some hair. If Brother Earl would open the door, he might get a haircut. I don't know. That, I, I hope that's kind of funny and it got you back, you, you're back from that panic attack you was about to have. But listen, all you got to do is open that door. You realize there's a lot more depth to Christianity. And you, listen, you're never going to get there when everybody else is the problem and you ain't got none. He said, well, I, 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 I got plenty of problems, but you ain't never said nothing about it. You've said plenty of stuff about other people's problems. And probably ain't even got no right to say it. The Bible says when you go to church, keep your mouth shut. I, Ecclesiastes 5, if you need the reference to it. But, amen. Ready and willing to talk about everybody <laughs> else's problems, though. But you the one needs to answer the door. Amen. Hey man, what I really think is y'all need to shh, 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 shh. Hey Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your goodness and for your grace. Lord, I, I know I've never been able to get no advancement. I've never, and Lord, that's a whole different meaning when we're talking about Christianity. I'm talking about advancement in my fellowship, advancement in my Bible studies and learning advancement in my abilities that you've called me to perform. Never been able to get no advancement in those things until I dealt with the, with the obstacles that was between you and me. And Lord, I know you're a graceful God, you're a merciful God, and you're not going to knock on 50 doors at the same time usually. But God, I pray that you'd help us as Christians, help us as your servants, help us, dear God, to open these doors one, one at a time and go through them and advance and grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us this morning, dear God. We can't get very far into this revival this week until we deal That's with right. those things that yeah. you're dealing with us about it. And God, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt because I know my own self and I know that there's no temptation taking us but such as is common to man. Lord, I know that you're trying to deal with each and every individual in this room about something in their life. And I pray, God, you'd help them this morning to come to a place of repentance and say, God, help me. And, Lord, if they're not willing to open the door, at least they could say, God, help me to get to the place where I'm willing to open some of these doors and let you come in. And, Lord, I know that you want to come in. Lord, uh, Revelation chapter 4, 
when the, when the doors open in heaven, immediately John was in your presence. Lord, we often yell at you through these windows and get no results. But if we'd open the door, we'd immediately be in your presence, immediately have fellowship with you, immediately get some problems resolved in our lives. And Lord, when you come in our presence, God, it's going to be a wonderful and, and a life-changing thing. We pray you'd help us, God, to have this kind of heart and this kind of mind. And we'll thank you and praise you for what you do. In Christ's name we pray it. Amen. Amen. All right, take a little break this morning.